Christia. Great to have you here. First, very nice to be. I want to talk about. You had a fascinating article, uh, interview uh, with with um, uh, Gloria Stein. I want to talk about in a minute. But but what's your take on last week on the ads, the wine, the celebrity ad, the race wars? Right. What's your takeaway from last week? Well, I think actually, although Barack Obama, in talking about they're going to try to make me look different may have misspoken as a politician or said something that wasn't very wise. As a political analyst, he was absolutely on, the, on target. And I think that his single biggest weakness, as you've been saying, is he hasn't yet connected with ordinary people. Now, I think that's a really hard thing to do if you're Barack Obama and if you're a presidential candidate. You actually have to be kind of superhuman to make it that far. And you probably have to be kind of superhuman to be a good president. But voters at the same time want people to feel like they're one of us, to feel like, you know, there's this great Kipling poem, of If, and uh, he talks about how the leader has to not look too good nor talk too wise. And so I, I think that that is the central problem right now for Barack Obama. And what complicates it is absolutely race. Mm -hmm. You know, it is harder for him to connect with the majority of ordinary Americans because his background is so different from that of most people. Yeah. And it's partly for racial reasons. It's partly because he has this, you know, father from Kenya, mother from Kansas. That's a, it, It's a fabulous well, well, narrative that, in many exactly. ways, but it's hard for people to relate to. The so I think is, it's though, his central problem. Does that separate him, though, as much as the fact that he went to Columbia and the fact that he went to Harvard, the fact that he's led... An elite but, life, because that's but McCain the, had a pretty no, elite life well, too. No, but, you know, but, 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 son, but, grandson of military establishment. Okay, but hold on, though. Again, let's look at what Republicans do every four years. They get their guy who went to Yale and Harvard, who talks in a Southern accent, and they make fun of the opponent who went to Yale and Harvard. And Republicans do it well. Republicans can't win by saying, "Oh, he's got this tough background." Republicans will win by saying. He's a Harvard Yard elitist. But I, I totally that's agree. How, I just, that's I just, how Republicans win every four years. I just years. think you tailor the attack on the particular mm -hmm. character and personality of the person. And with Barack Obama, it happens to be the case that in addition to having gone to fabulous schools, because clearly he's a really smart person and was hardworking and ambitious, he has these other elements in his background that make that connection at least with some voters, a little bit harder to do. For other people, I think it makes the connection easier. I think that's part of the reason he's so popular among young people. You know what, what Christian just said, said something that made me think about, about perhaps what the Obama campaign is trying to do when he speaks before big crowds. He's only been in politics for one year on the national scene. One year, and somebody sent me an email said he worked 137 days in the Senate before he decided he was ready to run for president. By, by elevating yourself with grand oratory, it, it's almost like he has to build that right, platform right. because he doesn't have the experience. Whereas the more you're in Washington, the more you work on your yes. good old boy routine. I think you're totally right. I mean, Obama has these two quite conflicting things he has to do. On the one hand, he had to prove that he's sort of big enough to be a commander in chief to sort of consort with world leaders. But on the other hand, now he has to do the, I'm the kind of guy you want to go to a barbecue with. It's One of his job. advisors said to me he has to stop playing basketball and only play football. Okay. Um, <laughs> in that effort. So there you go. Really? That's interesting because I thought when he, you know, gave up bowling and decided to do, <laughs> to, to, to play basketball, he looked... Uh, I thought he looked like he was like one of the guys. Like he could go anywhere and pick up a ball and dunk a three shotter and a shooter or whatever you call it. Jonathan. Clearly, I'm not a <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, honey, it's all right. Good night. Right. Jonathan I'm is. Out. You're all right, Willie. <laughs> Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan is to basketball what Mika uh, is to movies. Um, so you know, okay. you know again, okay. okay. let, let me tell you something. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's good. No, no, just talking about. But highly even, fashionable. Even <laughs> elitism <laughs> in athletics. Yeah. This is very interesting. I think Maureen Dowd talked about it this weekend about these women that don't trust a guy that goes to the gym for an hour and a half a day and is a, quote, beanpole that has zero body <laughs> oh. fat. No, 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 no. I you, read you say it. That, I read it. But I'm telling you, yeah. the fact that he goes to the gym an hour and a half will even be used against him, which I wish okay. I did that. But I'm saying that's not how normal people in the Rust Belt live. So there's so many things that politicians can and can't do. Okay. 
but there are all these perception things that we're talking about that are really important that you know more about than I do because you've run for office. But also, uh, one other big thing that has happened in the past few days that we haven't talked about yet is his latest sort of move toward the center, or can I say with offshore oil drilling, yep. and his change on that, or you could argue that he's having it both ways because he's seeing he's sort of not for it. But if I need to have He'll it to compromise get, yeah, because he's a realistic go. politician. See, I think that could be that could give people pause. I no, like, or, I like or, it. or may, maybe it was yeah. something he had to do because I, I think that the very strong opposition to offshore drilling has turned out to be one of the few policy mistakes that the Obama campaign has made in this cycle, and I think they had to move away from that. Otherwise, well, they would get and if you really, look at really hammered. Some of the key states like Florida, Pennsylvania, and Ohio, people are supporting offshore oil drilling. So you could say he was doing it. Four dollars <laughs> a gallon will really persuade you, hey, Jonathan. Uh, Christy, do you think that it was smart of Senator Obama to? I mean, he changed changed positions on offshore drilling, but he did it, I thought, in an interesting way. He, he hid behind the Gang of Ten, which is this bipartisan group of five senators, five, five Democrats, five Republicans. Do you think that was smart, or will the Gang of Ten's proposal not go anywhere? I think it was very smart, uh, because it insulates him at least a little bit from charges of flip-flopping by people like us in the McCain campaign. And so now he is able to say, look, you know, it's not that I am a totally cynical politician, it's that I am a realist. And I understand that to achieve things, to get my targets, you have to do deals, and you have to listen to the other side. And I think that does actually fit in really very nicely with the way that Obama presents himself to the world and the way he probably is. But you know, did, he's did, a, did he's you a guy who's see, good at though, listening. Where he announced that? He announced in Florida, where it's unpopular. I thought that was fascinating, and... It's not one of these things where he went to Michigan and it, it's like, wait, well, I say it's like when he went to Michigan and he challenged the auto industry a year ago. Now he chooses to go down to Florida on offshore oil drilling. If you're going to change your position there, change it in a state where it's very unpopular. I thought it was a very yeah. smart move. You, did, you, did you think that was a good idea? I think he had to do it. You're exactly right. It, uh, people that are paying so much at the gas pump don't want to hear about offshore oil drilling being banned. But also, I think you've got to put everything on the table. I think more and more Americans are realizing whether it's nuclear. And meet the press yesterday. John oh. Kerry moving on nuclear energy. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, offshore oil drilling. and ev I mean, everybody's coming together on these issues except for Nancy Pelosi and the House Democrats. And I suspect they'll be swept up into it soon, also, yeah. don't you? Absolutely. You know, we didn't get to talk about your Gloria Steinem piece. That was a fascinating read. Thank you very much. Yeah, she's a very fascinating woman. And she doesn't want Hillary to be on the Obama ticket. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, she, that's a good... Now people will get But she, 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 she is she's, supporting... She thinks it's not a good enough job for Hillary Clinton to be vice no. president. But she is supporting uh, Obama now, right? Absolutely. Yeah, she was very clear on that. All right, so people can still go to your website and... And read this article, right? They certainly can. It's archived. Joe, you're fabulous. Thank you uh, for the right. donation. <laughs> and that website address is? FT.com. It's FT. easy. FT. I can even remember no, that no, one. No, no, you can't. What's the that? official color? Salmon. That's what they call oh, it. Salmon. salmon. That's and the other big story of the week we're going to be hearing a lot about, the credit crunch. Yeah. First anniversary. Okay. Uh, coming up. And we're still. It may not be getting better. Oh. All right. Thank you, Christian. Thanks, Christian. Christian.